Hi, this is Jim, and this is Second Chance, a Moped Podcast. And welcome, everybody, to another week of Second Chance, a Moped Podcast. Yes, we're here. We're in the basement. It's dead of winter. Um, I've been sick since, like, Monday at about 2 a.m., and I went to work for about five, six hours just to finish one of my projects, and I... I finally start feeling better today. It's like Tuesday night. Um, just must have had a 24 hour bug or something. Everybody works like, cause we've kind of had the Rona going through. They're like, is it Rona? You need to go get tested. I'm like, no, I'm not running a fever. I think it's a sinus infection. I think it'll go away and it's gone away. So I'm happy, but no, I'm also old, old. My family does great deeds, whether you want them to or not. Um, I was sitting there working on bikes, and I was going to go over to a buddy's house because it's Royal Rumble season. We're going to watch a Royal Rumble. And all of a sudden, I get this call from my sister saying, we're coming over. And they decide to clean, like, my living room and my kitchen with all, like, two, four of my nieces there. And then I have a thing about coffee pots, if anybody remembers that or not. I never wash my coffee pot. I just let... I let that all that coffee grayness season into the glass. And then I had one sister and little niece wash my coffee maker and coffee pot. And now I can five pots later, I can almost get rid of the soap taste. Like just, yeah, but mopeds are going great. I'm almost done with my fast bike. It's, you know how it is guys. Like we get going on one thing, and especially in Minnesota, this is our Dow time. So it's like you ha- if you're not going to fix everything right now, correctly now you're never going to fix it i would like to make a great announcement to the moped world i possibly could have a fully functional rear taillight for the 2022 season not saying it's going to last the whole season but we're closer than ever to have a uh, functioning taillight um had to get that sip of coffee in um speaking of royal rumble like this is the time of year, the first time I ever did a podcast. Um, it would have been with the Jason uh, Thomas Nashley over at Moped Monday podcast, and I kind of did my thing. And I remember hearing somebody call in. I think it was Maddie. I'm not sure. But I do remember this, and this is weird how everything ties together and how we just happen to connect one day on Moped Army. Um, I heard somebody say, Frank Bailey from Pittsburgh is a saint. And like, that's it. And like, I don't know why. I still haven't heard the backstory to any of this. Maybe I'll get, I might have to hit Matty Bow up, see if that was him. Um, but, and I've heard, I've heard him on other forums and talking. And like, I just wanted to get to know him. And like, funny thing is, like, we start, it must be the algorithms of Facebook and everything bringing us together. Cause like, I saw a picture of his pop up yesterday and like i just wanted to get to know him because that's what i like about mopeds i get to know different people like i hear some people say like oh i listen only one people i know like i don't know that's your thing and that's cool but like i love meeting different people so with that i just want to bring our guest on right now have him introduce himself and that's your cue frank (laughs) yes okay just checking (laughs) Oh, and back to your coffee story. Uh, once upon a time, long ago, a friend of mine had a coffee cup in his AMC Gremlin that was absolutely filthy. And I looked at it as a child and said, what's going on with that? And he more or less said, as you said, well, if it gets washed, it just takes forever to taste right again. I'm like, okay, learn yeah. something. So you aren't alone. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So Frank, um, as we go, as people know, but I still feel the need to say it here on Second Chance Moped Podcast, we go through people's moped journey, i.e., the very first time they ever saw a moped to, you know, getting on Smile Ride, Mill Part, and what it's like today. So, Frank, let me ask you, what was the first time uh, you ever saw a moped? And let me rewind that up for a second. Aren't you in a moped club up in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh area? Yes, we're in a little moped club called Mopit. Yes. <laughs> And the rest of the gang are uh, full of enthusiasm and certainly a joy to be around, even though I regularly bust my man Emmett's balls and he likewise gets me back. But it's all good. It's all good. 
<laughs> right on, right on. So, Frank, why don't you tell us, what's your very first memory of seeing a moped? And granted, you are a few years older than me, so you probably remember when they first came out. Like, I wasn't around at that era or time. So, like, what was the first memory, first time riding? It's a very long story. You sure you're ready for this? Heck yeah, man. I love long stories. All right. Once upon a time, long ago, I was lucky enough to be on vacation in Bermuda with some of my family members, and they were cool enough to rent me a moped with pedals. Now, let me ask you this. I'm a weird stickler for timelines. Yes, Jesse, for the Magneos, I'm asking timelines again. What year is this it? Well, you know, at my advanced age, numbers and dates get awfully foggy. The <laughs> uh, late 60s, early 70s. At the awesome. Late. So all I remember is it had pedals. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture of me on it somewhere. And I've been trying to figure out what kind of moped it was after the fact, because hell if I knew back then, it's... Mm -hmm. In a, in a wonderful island community, riding a moped all by myself, how my family trusted me, I'll never know. But uh, in that same ride, they had something called National Kite Flying Day in Bermuda. Oh, wow. So I'm buzzing the roadway, and suddenly my neck is being sawed into by a kite string. I think I <laughs> Um, it was, uh, a severe case of rope burn slash string burn. Yeah. And my grandfather who was there on the vacation was kind of bent out of shape over it, but, uh, I put some ointment on it and continued to ride the damn thing. So all was well. Now, uh, the story continues fast forward a number of years, um, I'm in the driveway of the house, fiddling around with, oh, forget if it was uh, into cars at that time or still go-karts, mini bikes. But anyhow, one of my brother's crazy friends comes lump. And I think, unfortunately, we've lost Frank for a moment. I'm going to hit pause on the recording until we get Sir Frank back. So we broke up for a second and I hit pause and we're just going to pick up with Frank at the driveway working on a car, he thinks. All right. So you got, uh, I'm fiddling with cars or, or go-karts, mini bikes, something. And Pete Clancy comes up and he's on a uh, moped struggling to come up the driveway, struggling. Mm -hmm. he, and I say, hi, Pete, uh, is, is that a moped? He says, it's a mobilette. Hmm. There was some discussion on mobilette being a moped. It's, it's a car, but it's a Chevy and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. I remember vividly being unimpressed. I mean, had a great time in Bermuda. I see this and I'm thinking, oh, it's dorky. It's got pedals. It's underpowered. Why wouldn't you just get a motorcycle? What's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so... I don't even know when he left, but he, he left at some point. All right. So now, so now it's somewhere around uh, 2015. Okay. And I'm at the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, and my crazy friend Suzanne is there with her, uh, her Vespa Grande. Awesome. She's, Take it for a ride. Like, Okay. All right. So I take it for a ride. It's running horribly, just horribly. After she had showed me, um, oh, here, look, the spark plugs are fouling out and I have to change them off. And I'm like, all right, well, that's not right. And let's just say whenever I'm around an engine that isn't running right, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard. To mm. Really gets on my nerves. I don't Yeah, care. yeah. You just got to solve that puzzle. Engine. So I take it for a ride and it's, I don't know, maybe 20 miles an hour. And again, I'm, I'm unimpressed. All right. It's, it's dorky. It's got pedals and 
Okay, fine. So I get back to Suzanne and I more or less say, hey, this thing's running like crap. I said, why don't you bring it over to my house? I'm certain I can make it run better. Now, bear in mind, I know nothing about mopeds. I've fiddled with lots of machines over the years, but know very little about mopeds. Mm -hmm. so brings it over and I screw around with it. She'd already paid to have uh, uh, an expansion chamber put on and I think a larger carburetor and Apparently it had never been tuned right. Yeah. So with the the minimal knowledge I had, I found it ran great with the air cleaner off, got her a free flow air cleaner, and she was delighted that it's now going like 30 miles an hour. Okay, good, good, fine. So somewhere before then, I'd run into an old guy. Oh God, he had to have been 60 something. <laughs> Maybe my age uh, down here. I wasn't going to bust your chops too bad on that, Frank. Don't worry about it's that. It's all right. Everybody does. It's okay. So <laughs> I run into this old guy in Florida, probably before the Suzanne adventure. And I'm staring at a moped in the bike rack. I'm like, hey, this looks kind of fun. And this gentleman comes over wondering who I am, what I'm going to be doing to his moped, uh, as he should. Mm -hmm. And he he explains it to me and it's kind of cool and he really wasn't an enthusiast and i thought well that sounds like fun to me um no insurance required in florida license only uh no title and i thought well maybe i could find one of these sometime for a small amount of money neglected make it go so on and so forth yeah yeah so, toggle back to the post Suzanne experience. At some point I decided, all right, I'm gonna find one of these. So I find one, uh, it's of course a Tomo somewhere in the middle of Ohio that doesn't <laughs> run. And I'd skulked around on Moped Army and bumped into our pal Monty and of course Alex, uh, both full of enthusiasm, couldn't put together a deal with Monty, kept looking at, uh, uh, various items he'd had, but none of them were a fit. Um, so I go fetch this Tomos, drag it home. And the guy says, uh, you know, it, it has bad, uh, bad crankcase seals. And I thought, God must be a moron. There's no seals in the crankcase. It's too <laughs> put together. He's, he's missing something. So, <laughs> so I tank wasn't in bad shape. Patched up the bi-turbo, a little brazing, and repacked it. Put it all together, gaskets, clean the carb. Won't start. Won't yep. start, start, won't start. Uh, I really didn't want to take it all apart because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I skulked around on Moped Army, which surprisingly, maybe it was my ineptitude on trying to use the search function, but I couldn't find anything. So I finally stumbled on a chainsaw engine site where they more or less said, uh, seals, crankshaft seals. Yep. Oh, okay. All right, fine. So I finally open up the gearbox and the seal was so horrid that it <laughs> not have been there. So, all right, still being the tightwad, not wanting to do a full rebuild because I didn't know what I was doing. Bought seals, put in both seals, fired it up with some coaxing. It made so much smoke, it was like a mosquito fog. Oh, yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> Incredible amount of smoke. Took it for a ride, and uh, I can't remember how fast it was. Let's say 30-ish. I don't mm -hmm. know. But it was, it was pretty peppy. It was kind of fun. And... Uh, the, the low cost aspect, uh, it was a fun, cheap machine to fiddle around with. I didn't want to go motorcycle route because A, they're fast, you could kill yourself. And uh, my parents didn't have a lot of rules, but two of them were no motorcycles, no tattoos. Hmm. Friends with tattoos. It's, hmm. it's a, Alex keeps trying to talk me into tattoos. And I got him wound up once when I said, hey, maybe I'll get, no. No. <laughs> But uh, you're in a moped gang, man. Aren't you supposed to get a tattoo of the gang? 
they keep telling me that, but they keep telling them I'll just use uh, uh, indelible marker if I <laughs> get excited. But uh, that's kind of how I became acquainted with mopeds, and uh, I've acquired uh, truly enough that I can't keep count of them right now, in spite of what my wife says. But <laughs> that's great. So let me ask you this. You, you get a moped, you're riding, you start riding a bit. When do you kind of find a community to like ride with? Cause you're, I mean, it, how did that happen running into the moped guys or did you go to, did you discover rallies or like, how did the community grow up about you? Well, I don't know how or why, but uh, my buddy Alex kind of sucked me into all of this. And I've been to a few uh, zeros rallies. We went to a rally in philly oh the infamous spaghetti rally in oh you philly. didn't and you didn't die we're proud we're i happy. didn't die me, me and one or two other people strange as it is did not get sick yeah Alex and a number of others yeah, it was touch and go for it. so you're an anomaly of that did you have the spaghetti though i had the spaghetti and my theory on that was after we heard all of the intel was it was the noodles it was the noodle mm -hmm. i thought I vividly remember when I sauced my noodles, the sauce was incredibly hot. So I'm thinking whatever bad juju was on the needles, the noodles, the sauce baked it out. But maybe oh. I'm just lucky. I don't know. Yeah, dude. That sometimes that's just Russian roulette there. You know, I know I talked to a few people like we didn't get sick. And then some people like, I literally thought I was going to die. Like <laughs> I, uh, I've had that experience, but it was uh, what I affectionately refer to as my gin poisoning experience. <laughs> well, I had over cocktailed, stood up from the bar and realized, uh oh, trouble. And, and I couldn't keep toast down till 4 p.m. the next day. So oh, that geez. <laughs> it's funny because some of the guys um, who I work with are really into racing as well. And what went on this past year, it happens every year over the first of the year, is called the Tulsa Shootout. It's a big midget race down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, years ago, they used to have what was called the STP Shootout a week before, and that was go-karts in the Tulsa, in the Expo Center, I think they call it. I went down there three years in a row, and I qualified for the A-Main every time, and I got like a fifth, a 15th, but like every time I got deathly ill down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so... I just won't go back. Like that's like that's a city. Like I don't know how it happened. Like that whole deathly ill. I thought I had to go to the hospital one time afterwards. Like I was running a hundred and two temperature after the A main. They loaded me into the ambulance. Well, what bad food? Water? I, the water, water, I think, is what it is. Because their water is so freaking irony down there. Like my mom and stepdad would go out for the night. Like because we'd like we'd race the first and the second. So like my mom and stepdad would go out for like New Year's Eve and I'd, you know, have water or whatever. I'm like 12, 13 down there. So like, I have no idea, but that's the only thing I could think. That was the only consistent thing I did down there every year. So yeah. Um, I know the, the Florida water here, uh, let's just say there's a period of adjustment yeah, yeah my mom owned property and houses down in florida for better part of the last 10 years and like i yeah it's different i <laughs> will say that she was all around Kissimmee and st cloud and all that stuff so la vida my sister would visit once upon a time long ago and she would drink nothing but bottled water mm -hmm. and uh, my father and i we were kind of like uh, we'll just tough it out and I won't get started on my pet peeve over bottled water. <laughs> That's all right. So you talk, what was your, what was your first um, group ride or experience with, with riding with other moped people like that? I have to find that interesting. Like I always find that interesting when people find the scene or whatever, because like in Minneapolis, St. Paul, like we have a great, once a week ride like and i i'm always trying to drum up stuff people like and there's a core group of people that will go out for like 20 
to 50 to 80 mile rides on the weekend but like there's a good group of people that meet up like anywhere from like 10 to 35 on a thursday night for a moped ride like what was the first time of your experience doing that well again back to my buddy alex he he said hey we're gonna ride here and go there and do this would you like to come and it's like yeah sure why not so we did that and i think at the time alex had a hobbit which he had hotted up although the uh the uh, end of the exhaust kept falling off i think i retrieved it for him several times and Proma pipe needed to be welded. The what was it? A Proma pipe? Because they're uh, notorious for falling off. The the baffles on those just fall off. That's what they I, do. I think finally the baffle fell off and got crushed or something. I think. <laughs> it, other than that, it was a good ride, and uh, I couldn't ride next to him because I only have good hearing in my left ear, and I'm trying to save that. And mm-hmm. he, of course, still harangues me on that a full face helmet but uh, you know it's just a stupid moped i i grew up riding a bicycle with no helmet and now the kids are suited up like they're going to a ninja war or something. <laughs> yeah so there's a there's definitely a fine balance between um well you said you went to a few different like what's the when you're i, I know you're down in florida right now but when you're up in the summer do you guys have like a weekly ride night up there? Or? We try. Yes, we try to do weekly rides. And one of the last rides we had before it got too cold for old people, uh, our our uh, uh, honorary member or honorary uh, 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 participant Joe, he uh, he had a hell of a ride. And I of course had the uh, step through Jawa out, and I was pounding the living crap up. We went all over hill and dale, and uh, I thought I had the Jawa running pretty well, but uh, uh, I'm a, I'm embarrassed to admit it. It soft seized. Oh! But in my defense, I never rebuilt the engine, so the seals are old. Oh, geez, it's yeah. Needed to be refreshed, but uh, it it cooled off. We rode it again threw it in his truck and we rode for a short while and then it fired up and we kept going. But uh, he even checked the compression when I got home, which is still solid. So uh, no great damage done, but yeah, weekly rides are something that the Mopit group tries to do. And uh, a number of people try to create rides to go on and me because I'm like, uh, uh, challenged on any kind of directions i just follow along i gotta follow him. i think alex asked me to uh come up with a route once and i said i'm not your guy it is not gonna happen <laughs> see you but might I'll... be the best guy to lead a ride because you're just gonna get them all lost and that's what's yeah. great about moped rides is getting there lost the, on them there was the one ride that i missed where i forget who it was who was leading the ride but they took everybody onto the interstate by mistake I've done that. That's quite exhilarating. I tell you that. Like I've done that on uh, in in Minnesota, and then I went to Moped Spring Break, and yeah, that was that was quite exhilarating at like nine thirty, ten at night, going down the interstate. That was that was rad. Yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. I can't thank Conan enough for giving me a Hobbit that was doing fifty five down there. So. Well, you know. I discussed this with a number of people, uh, most recently Reno of the Zeros, and we're in agreement that 4045 is probably good enough. That's a magic moped number. Yeah, recently I threw together a uh, Top Tank Safari. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Kit, And it's, uh, it's definitely going past 50, but even even around my house in Pittsburgh, you really shouldn't be going that fast. And uh, I think one of the reasons I'm still alive is because in my youth, I drove underpowered everything. Mm. Friends had these big engined GTOs or other beasts. And, and I think if I'd had one of them, there might've been some trouble. So four cylinders, low power, I'm still here. It's a good. 
<laughs> Probably a lot of truth in that. I, I've heard enough stories from my dad or his, some of his friends. Um, yeah, I, they're, how some of those guys lived, I have no idea. Um, but what you talk about I, before it got too cold for you, what's too cold for riding for you? Because I have a threshold in the fall and I have a threshold in the spring. Cause I'm, a, I don't know if you know, I'm up in Minnesota. So like it's two different variables for me. Like what's well, too cold for you to ride? My threshold is radically different from the rest of the folks in Pittsburgh. They glove up and wear all kinds of stuff. And uh, I'd gone with them on one of the Christmas Krampus rides and froze my nuts off. It was <laughs> bad, 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 bad. But uh, for me to have fun, uh, I'd rather have, you know, above 60. We, we did a uh, moped sunset cruise yesterday uh, evening, which was cool, and it was probably high 50s. And, and me, I stupidly went with jeans, sweatshirt, flip-flops, and <laughs> it was a little brisk. It was yeah. a little brisk. I tend to agree with you, like, to have fun on a moped, it's got to be above 60. Can I ride a, like, I'll ride around in the fall. Like, anything below 55, I'm really not riding because I'm not winterized yet, if you will. But, like, in the springtime, pretty much anything above 45, I'll go ride, at least get out and ride a few miles just to say I rode that day. But, yeah, there's there's a lot of truth in that 60 and above. I stopped skiing years ago, A, because I wasn't any good at it. I wanted to go fast and every you time too, huh? I'd fall down. But there was one time I, I had pretty good balance that day. I'm going down the hill and I feel the wind just sucking right through me. And I thought, mm -hmm. you know, maybe this isn't for me. Call me a wuss if you want, but it's just too damned cold. Now, the other side of that coin is... Uh, We'll come down here in the summer. I know nobody goes to Florida in the summer, but it's it's still kind of fun. A, because there's mopeds. B, because there's so much less people here. Yeah. We go up and down uh, uh, the, the local Minnesota Key to the Tiki Bar. And believe me, it is just a joy to go down that road at only, say, 35 miles an hour with that wind coming right at you, it's warm, it's pleasant, mm -hmm. it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just wonderful. Where are you right now in Florida, Frank? Just so like I have an idea, because I do know, Florida. that's one of the few states I do have a clue of where I'm going. Let's just say uh, we're just south of Gulf Coast. Okay, yeah, I love... And I, I was a bigger fan of the Gulf Coast than I was the other side, just because the Gulf of Mexico is just, it's nice. It's soft. I, I don't want to talk too much about Florida because I know I'm going to get a rash of shit from my friends in Pittsburgh and my buddy Andy Scouten. He, uh, he got a little perturbed when I was saying I was in Florida some time ago, but that's okay. That's because you're warm and we're up here in the fucking frozen tundra. Like, yeah. that's why. I, I was being kind of a dick, so Andy's anger. Andy was, deserves every bit of shit you give to him, okay? Well, he gave it back to me, and I think <laughs> I turned that day. Let me ask you this, since apparently I, I can't shut up about it. Uh, are you flying up for the zero swap meet? You know, you I should. You should. I considered it, but <sighs> I already had a uh, minor let's just say situation where I had to fly home and already do something once. So no, I'm not going <laughs> to the SWAT meet this year, but it, that's it, a bummer. It, it would be fun. Always a good time with the zeros. Yeah. yeah. So let me get some more Florida moped stuff. Have you gotten out to see any of the Florida drag scene going on that Tyrone and some of those guys have been talking like, I get the hustle. Like I, I figured it out. Uh, like it's, I wish I could go down to it. It's just so far. Drag scene. I don't know what you're talking about. There's like, okay. So there's Tyrone something or other. There's about five or six guys who like drag, drag race mopeds. 
And it's like south of, I know it's south of, it's around Miami area, I believe. I heard of a group somewhere up in uh, Tampa, I believe, but I haven't heard of this one in Miami. And I will send you some info about it just to dr drive your car up. It'd be, it's a hoot. Like, I would love to go see it sometime just because like Tyrone's a hustler. That's all I can say. He's trolling a lot of people whether they know it or not. Send the info. I'd take a look. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. think racing is my thing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just not the guy who's trying to have the fastest moped. It's like with, with, the, with the V1 Safari, it's like, all right, that's pretty fast. and uh, It's too fast. It's good enough. Whatever. <laughs> no, that's, that's the way to go, especially with mopeds, because, again, these are just kids' toys. I mean, it's some people, like there's that select group of people in that, 70 mile an hour club and there's a few more people going 65 and but it's like it's cool and it's great but like i find myself chasing the speed and i ask myself why like well because i'm dumb I, I i've been in the car hobby probably since i was 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. and speed comes at a cost my mm -hmm. my gtos they were perpetually blowing up engines transmissions and rear ends because they were just pounding the living crap out of these cars yep now, i also got into turbocharged sobs uh the sob 900s and there's there's another cult out there of people that take these way over the top but because mm -hmm. i love those cars the transmission is not built to take that kind of power. So what happens is they get the engines all tweaked and jazzed with things that I can't even begin to explain. And then with all that extra power, the transmissions blow up. <laughs> and now you got to spend even more money. And, you know, do, do you really want to have like an F-15 fighter jet that requires such an ungodly amount of maintenance and cost? So you, it, it's like taking a car to the drag strip. You, you run it, it blows up, you fix it again. Uh, cubic dollars, more money, money, money. I, I, it's I'm, the breakdown clock. It's always running. I, I am more happy to resurrect some pile of shit <laughs> that than a parts bike and just, just run the thing and get... I, I've got another uh, uh, safari step-through down here that goes a blistering... 33 miles an hour on a good day but you know what it's a fun bike yeah and, and it always runs it failed me once since i put it together because the brand new condenser went bad and but i'm now, totally with you about slow riding fun stock bikes like i me and a friend this fall and i'm just talking to you like we just met because i never expect anybody to know anything about me we picked up a couple grand prix and uh bought of us grand prix and i was thinking about and these are rare bikes and i was thinking about building the motor out and everything else and i'm like i had like my basket full of treats of french parts and i'm just like why i have a bike that goes fast why not just keep this one stock and slow and fun and reliable that's the bought of us with the french engine yeah with a peugeot 103 yes yes our, our friend joe is working on one of those right now i can't wait to see how that thing works yeah, I'll have to send you some of the pictures. I I got a whole bunch um done for the moped rich calendar. Um but mopeds are I I'm getting back to the point where I can jo enjoy them slow again. Here's a fun fact. The first car I ever owned, I paid $60 for. It was probably about $40 too much. <laughs> it was and it was French. And I, I learned how to repair it. And I learned then that the French do strange things. I went from the French car to British cars, which at least made sense. I mean, they mm -hmm. broke, but they made sense. Uh, Was it a Renault or what French car did you have? Well, well, back then, we didn't call them Renault. We called them Renault. <laughs> it was a Renault. And well... Not to interrupt you, but I'm convinced this is the reason why I got the job I currently have, because in the interview, the owner of the company was there and my direct boss was there and the owner of my company's father worked for Renault or Renault or whatever in France. 
and he lived there for about 10 years and he used to ride a Peugeot 103 all over. And like, he just sent me pictures of it this last week. And so I'm really convinced mopeds got me my current job. Could be. Yeah. I, I, I had a tour of duty in uh, uh, the Netherlands for a while and we were driving Citroëns. Hmm. Interesting. I've never what who made those? I've never heard of those before. Citroen, another French company. I'll be. Yeah. I'll if, you, if you go to the uh uh import car show in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, they have a large, large uh uh contingent of uh Citroens. I want I might have to check this out because like I grew up in a body shop, Frank, and like I am around my family is old Ford people. So like blah, 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 Ford's everything, except for my dad. He would always have a Corvette in the driveway. I mean, always owned a Corvette, but like I am so sick of looking at American muscle cars because I've been going to the same five car shows my entire life. And I still go to them because it's Stockholm syndrome, like one of the biggest car, the biggest car show is called Back to the 50s. And it's at the state fairgrounds. It's like four blocks from my house. So I kind of almost have to go to it every year. But it's like you still look at the same 15. You look at the same 45 Chevelles, the same 30 Camaros, the same. It's like, oh, I get so sick of looking at that crap. I mean, gassers are starting to look good to me. I'm so sick of looking at that. My first career was spent 10 years working in a body shop. Bless you. <laughs> I had learned learned to get to the point where I was uh, on a 50-50 flat rate basis, mm -hmm. did some restorations that obviously were time and material, but uh, I, I got out of the racket when I realized the, the people that were making the real money were the ones that were just flim flamming things together. So, mm -hmm. well, that and, and uh, I developed a sensitivity to all the solvents, so I switched yep. over computer repair and the, the troubleshooting was actually a lot more fun, but uh, it, it was fun in the beginning, the automotive world. I got to learn in a very small shop, worked with a cranky old guy who's still my friend. Hmm. I think he's still around, but he, he taught me uh, well, he was a good craftsman, still is. His little garage behind his shop still patches some stuff up. I keep threatening to ride out there on a moped someday and show him, but uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm ready for a ride on country roads that far, but <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. So back to mopeds a little bit. What is your stable looking like? You said you, your wife thinks it's too big, but you don't think it is. Like, what do you have right now in your stable of bikes down in Florida and back in Pittsburgh? Florida, the acquisition started with uh, a Tomos Revival with a scattered engine because the uh, oil pump clip quit. Yep. Uh, then a JC Penny Pinto that the wife drives. Nice. Then I picked up the Safari Step Through and finally brought down a Jawa 210 Sport, which is, of course, my favorite just because it's quirky and not many people know how to work on them or want to work on them <laughs> and or hate them. But uh, when the two-speed engine is working properly, it just thrills me for some reason. I love the Jawas for the square cylinder. That thing is just so, I, I forget what Jawa motor it is. It looks like a box. It's so freaking adorable. Like, I don't know, mm -hmm. like I had one and it sat in my basement for two years. And then finally I'm just like, I'm never going to do anything with it. So I sold it to this Matt kid in Minneapolis who, who's a Jawa nut. So like, I'm like, you're going to do something with this. And he is actually doing stuff with it. If you see in the lovers of Jawa page, you'll see a blue Jawa that Matt Decker's, he bought that for me. And it was literally a push, like hundred dollar bike. In Pittsburgh, I have two Tomos top tanks. I have a Jawa step through, two speed as well. I've got a really, really ratty Motor Marina Raven. Um, I've got a, uh, the, the uh, 
the uh, Minarelli top tank, the one that went 50, the Safari. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a, a couple of uh, sacks. Both of them were absolute garbage. I'd, I'd bought five mopeds that some guy was trying to unload just an hour north. And I managed to put together three or four of them. So you say it was absolute garbage. Is that unlike any other sacks? I mean, I'm just. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm saying... just, is it the 505 1D motor that everybody craves, or it's just the 50 whatever motor that nobody wants? I think, I think one of them was a 505B, which I converted to a 505C. And the other one, the 504A, I believe, <laughs> I kitted, which uh, actually is quite spunky. And, and I, I've had conversations with our, our friend Andy over sax clutches. And in our opinion, they're much maligned. I mean, once you get it set up properly and you don't try to get it to slip excessively, mm -hmm. It's a little slow to engage, but then it takes off fine. And the uh, my only complaint with the 505C, I was trying to get a little more power out of it and tweaked, tuned as best I could, and it just doesn't have a whole lot of power. I think it I think it squeaks up to thirty something, but it'll climb a steep hill by my house just fine. So it's it's fun, you know. Anybody who can like take an undesirable motor or moped like a Sax or a Jawa, I have so much respect for it because, I mean, I'm sorry, anybody can make a Pook or a Hobbit or a Derby go or Tomos go 45, 50. But if you're squeezing 35 to almost 40, like 35 ish out of a Jawa or a Sax, dude, thumbs up. Like, that's awesome. I think the uh, the kitted 504 touched 40. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, and, and it's spunky. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate your comments, and that's kind of why I was drawn to Jawa and the sax. It's like, all right, well, you say, they say you can't do that. Well, I'm going to do it anyhow. And, and it's been a painful process because uh, anytime you ask for help with certain things on most <laughs> You either get crickets or anger. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of truth in that. A lot of truth in that. Um, so what has mopeds been like for you during the Rona times? Like I, it sounds like you got in a kind of start hitting the scene and how, let me rewind a bit. How did you get hooked up with the moped guys and how was prospecting for them being a distinguished man of age like yourself? Well, Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> again, my buddy Alex and the whole Mopit group then, uh, they took it easy on me. They weren't too harsh. Um, they, they did make me, uh, when I was patched in, drink uh, a, a can of uh, weasel urine. Oh, wait, no, that was Pat's PBR. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't Pat's, but anyhow. Uh, <laughs> it was potato, you know, potato, I, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I embraced it. You know, I, I did whatever they wanted me to do, but uh, they, they, were pretty, uh, they were pretty easy on me, and uh, I didn't have to wear a, a dildo around my neck or anything like <laughs> that. Uh, to each their own. But, yeah, they're a great group of guys. They, they like to ride, like to fiddle. Uh, I think my man Emmett is back in the shop tonight, and now he's not going to be freezing his nads off because it's a little warmer up there now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what what was mopeds like during the downtimes of Corona for you guys and yourself up there? It was pretty bad. A lot of distance. Mm -hmm. Slowed down. Uh, some people were trying to fiddle around on our own, and then. Early on, uh, a number of us uh, got vaccinated and tried to uh, limit any uh, uh, 
strange attendees from stopping by. So it's like, all right, if you're vaccinated, fine. And I think there was a time where we were wearing masks or just keeping incredible distance, like somebody would be fiddling around in the garage <clears throat> and I'd just stay outside. I just mm -hmm. stay, I'd keep my distance and, and knock wood so far. Uh, I haven't gotten sick, but uh, you know, I think we're getting to the point on the virus where it's going to come down to, hey, it's a cold flu corona season. Just mm -hmm. you know, and get your vaccine and keep your distance and we'll deal with it. And the, the, the media keeps whipping it into a frenzy and we really don't need to go too much on that. But mm -hmm. yeah, the virus did slow down all activities in Pittsburgh for the Mo Pitt group. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I know for the scene up here, they it was very isolated for a long time. And the first real big thing, uh, first big thing everybody did together was this kind of half ass swap meet, kind of get together at one individual's business. And it was really weird. I mean, that's a it was almost like getting back together with a group of friends after a big fight. Like everybody was kind of like kind of touching their toe on the water to see if it's okay almost like it was good to see everybody i took i took a group of people on a quick moped ride because it was around the area where i live but like it was just weird and this summer everybody obviously loosened up a bit uh what are your plans this coming summer for mopeds are you just kind of gonna do what the group does or you got any rallies you want to get out to like what's when you're in pittsburgh What's the farthest away you went to go to a moped rally? Are you a traveler for them or just kind of stay in your little nucleus? I traveled a bit. We've been to Toledo a couple times. Uh, again, been to Philly once. And there was a Gettysburg rally that I wanted to go to, but due to other plans, I couldn't make it. That would have been fun. So I don't know what's available next, but... Uh, a lot of times when I go to these rallies, it's like, um, all right, I'm I'm exercising my superpower, which is that <laughs> visibility, <laughs> and I can't I can't hang with the big dogs. They're going to be, uh, let's just say, uh, drinking to excess. I'll have my limit, and it's like I'm done. Like, for instance, today was happy hour day, and then I just get thirsty. I need water. I'm done. You know, I'm a lightweight, so. Uh, and that's yeah. not a bad thing, Frank. I don't, I, <laughs> dr the drinking option was removed for me at a very young age just because I drink to excess, and that's all I would do, so it's best that I don't drink, so if we ever are to rally together, I'll stay on the court. I'll have my coffee and just you have your cocktail and we'll sit there and look at all the kidlins drinking to excess it, it it's all good i'll oh, yeah uh, dude i'll have my limit because e even when i was much much younger my uh my stomach would say you know uh that's 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 enough <laughs> <laughs> like my gin poisoning experience yeah there you go my guy um I can't thank you enough for coming on and just taking a chance with a, with an unknown person like myself. Um, if you ever find your way in Minnesota and want a place to stay or want some dirty hobbits to go ride, you're always welcomed at my house, Frank, you and your wife. Um, Minnesota has some great roads to ride. That's what I tell people all the time. I've been all over the country riding mopeds and I'll put Minneapolis, St. Paul up against anybody. I've heard about your area and I appreciate the offer. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't have been more entertaining, but. Oh, uh, no, Frank, you're awesome. For an old guy, I did the best I could. And you did great. I, I appreciate the whole scene and all the opportunities, even if I'm just in the back as a spectator. And I've, I've met an awful lot of fun people who are younger than my children. Well, that's okay. Uh, uh, my guys in Pittsburgh regularly go back and forth on the old young thing. And it's, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. It's state of mind. It's all state of mind. If you want to be, if you want to be that person who's old and sits in the house, or if you want to always be going and doing stuff, like I've had a few near death experiences and I've come to realize a few things that like are 
tomorrows are never guaranteed, so get out and live right now. Like, that's why I've been kind of going out as much as I have been. Not only that, I'd learned from my grandmother and to some extent from my father who said the same thing. You get older and they say, you know, I, I don't have any friends. All my friends are dead. <laughs> and I, tr I tried to tell my father, well, you know, you, you, need, you need to make some new friends. So if I have younger friends, then they'll be around longer than I am and I'll have someone to talk to. So how can you beat that? Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better. We'll sit and chit chat a little bit after the show, Frank, but I want to, again, thank you very much for coming on second chance moped podcast. Thank you everybody for checking out the show. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel, second chance moped podcast. I think it is just look up YouTube mopeds, support them all. Um, if you got a guest ideas, I got us mapped out almost to 100. I think you're episode 96, maybe. Um, I can't believe I've made it this far. I can't thank everybody enough. And Frank, don't forget, mopeds are dumb. They are. Absolutely. Thanks, Frank. I'll talk to you later, my guy.